Hello and welcome to the Fat Boss Guide to Will of the Emperor, 10 man normal in the Mogushan vault. Hello, and this fight is disappointing as fuck. Yeah. If you're a tank or if you're a melee, you'll enjoy this fight, but if you're anything else, then you're going to have a very boring time. What? We could argue that multi dotters will have fun here as yeah, well. Seriously, but, yeah, seriously, your multi dotter shit. It's really good for multi dotters, but actually, it doesn't sound too bad in the end, but let's get on with it. So, <laughs> for this fight, you do want to bring two tanks. Uh, Two to three healers, depending on how you're feeling on the day. Um, range DPS is arguably a lot better. However, you do need to bring one DPS tank. It's yeah, yeah. So like a ret. You want one or... guy that can pull more threat than the other DPS. Yeah, and that'll be explained shortly. So this encounter is all about controlling ads, more or less. Um, and there are three different types of ads in play. There is Emperor's Rages, Courages, and Strengths. First, we're going to talk about the Rages. Now, these are two ads that will spawn uh, at the exact same time, and they'll just fixate on random players. As simple as that. And these ads can be CC, they can be stunned, they can everything. Sheep. Every form of CC that you know can be used and works on these ads. Um, however, it's not really needed. No, not not a normal anyway. All these ads will do is just melee swing, and they they will hit quite hard, but not really enough for you to worry too much about. If you're using two healers, it's probably a good idea not to get hit by these ads. Um, however, they die very, very quickly, so you want to nuke the living shit out of these. And on the sort of priority list of ads, these are second. Now, the next ad that we're going to talk about is Emperor's Courage. Now, one of these spawns at the time at the side of the room, and it fixates on the tank that is furthest away. Now, basically, if this does eventually manage to get to the your tank, um, it will do a, like a bunch of damage and it will also slow your tank's movement speed by 25% and that stacks up to 100% basically you're rooted so you've got to make sure that you do kill these before they reach your tank however yeah. they do have a nice little shield in front of them that makes it so you can't damage them from the front so move behind them and kill yeah. them however when they do initially spawn the shield isn't active so you need to make sure that when they do spawn is that you quickly dot them because these are the most important ads to kill you need to make sure that these die very very quickly and Before that they, they don't reach, reach the tank, the tank. Yeah. if they reach the tank then you're going to have issues and the last ad we're going to talk about is the emperor's strength um, and these ads, um, apart from doing melee hits, will do one other ability called uh, Energizing Smash, which is a very large uh, sort of a circle area on the ground that he'll slam his fist into. And if you get hit by it, you'll take quite a lot of damage and you'll be stunned for two seconds. Um, and after every successful smash, the next smash will be one yard larger. So yeah. you need to make sure that you know these ads die fairly quickly because otherwise the the whole fucking circle is going to be covering the room and everyone's going to get hit by it now the way that we deal with this ad is that we have our well our off tank our third tank our dps tank tank it and just move it out of the way just have it on the side um and every time one of the circle comes down which will be right on top of the tank the dps, DPS tank, tank you need to make sure that you just run through the boss to avoid it it's exactly. very very easy very very quick so they're the three ads now. After 90 seconds of having a little bit of fun with the ads, the bosses also spawn as well, while the ads continue spawning. Um, basically, you want both your tanks uh, to taunt one each and drag them towards the end of the room, as shown on screen here. While the bosses are active, the ads will still spawn, so you need to make sure that you're dealing with the ads. Basically, the bosses are the last on your DPS priority. You DPS the bosses when you can. Mm. Um, however, if you do have melee DPS, it's probably a good idea just to have them sat on the bosses, because there's... The ads do spawn in different locations, so it is important that you know, you're know you not running all over the fucking room to get to them. However, the courage will always spawn on one side of the room, which means it needs to move to the other side of the room to get to the furthest away tank. So if that does cross the path of the first tank, the tank that's nearest, then the melee can jump off that boss and jump onto the ad. Mm. Um, which you know will minimise downtime, and by the time that courage has reached the other the the other tank or is close to it, the melee can then just go onto that boss instead and just rotate. Yeah. So there's very little DPS downtime. Now the bosses themselves don't really have that many abilities, but the first one we're going to be talking about is magnetic armor. Now this is a debuff; it just puts on its primary target, which is the tank. And uh, basically, if you move more than 16 yards away, it grips you back in without fail so don't move 16 yards away because of the next ability be called devastating combo now devastating combo is a series of five spells 
um, consisting of two different types of spells. Now, the first spell that we're going to talk about is Devastating Arc. This is like a massive cleave that will appear on the left, the right, or directly in front of them, and it's like a 180 degree cone. Um, it'll do a lot of damage, and it'll also apply a debuff that reduces your armor by 10%. And that stacks. Uh, and it does stack, so if you get keep getting hit by these, then you're going to take not only a lot of damage from the actually getting hit by them, but the boss's melee swings afterwards are going to fucking annihilate you, because these bosses already hit fucking hard. Now, on top of this, he'll also do a stomp. Now, the stomp is a 12-yard AoE directly underneath the boss, uh, and if you get hit by it, it will stun you for two seconds, and it'll also do quite a lot of damage. So you also need to make sure you avoid this. Now, you might think, oh, shit, well, you said that it'll be fun to tank this fight. I'm just having to avoid all this stuff. However, if you do manage to avoid a full devastating combo, you are rewarded, my friends, with something called a opportunistic strike. Now, this is an extra action button you get if you do avoid all five spells, and once you activate it on an enemy target, it does 500 k physical damage to them there and then like a big burst so this is this is for the tanks and the melee if yeah you, if you do avoid if you avoid a whole combo that's what you get you get that reward now the, the best way to avoid the combo is looking at the boss's animation and there's also like little dotted lines that sort of show the outline of where yeah, they're about like to weird, hit wavy you lines can use stuff. that as well i mean you should use both but the best indicator is the animation if the boss lifts his sword over his right hand shoulder then that the devastating arc is going to be on the left hand side and if he lifts his sword over his left hand shoulders then he's going to swipe down on the right hand side and if he lifts it over the, his head then it's going to be directly in front of him and for the stomp well you'll see through the dotted lines it's pretty obvious once you've seen it a couple of times you'll get used to it and it should be very very easy to avoid now with the opportunist strike you want to make sure that you use this on the boss however the melee dps every now and then if they are switching to the courage and the courage is getting very close to the tanks which of course it cannot because you have to move from the devastating combo um, then you can of course use it on that ad as well but yeah it, it and that's, that's why, why the courages needed. are so deadly because they do reach the tank while a devastating combo is going on the tank can't move mm. which means he's going to get absolutely fucked back so <laughs> basically yeah. So while this is going on, you need to make sure that you, you really you want your ranged and your healers to sort of stack in between the ads or like slightly back because obviously you need to make sure that you're still in range of the tanks to heal them and the bosses to DPS them. But you don't want to be standing so close because you don't want to get hit by the devastating arc. So you want your range to sort of position around the middle-ish. And obviously you want to tank the Emperor strength on the side, just out of the way. Make sure you're obviously still in healing range. And the fight, essentially, it's all about controlling these ads. Just priority the right ads to kill the courages when they spawn kill the rages, kill the strengths, nuke the boss. That's it. There's nothing else to this fight apart from one other ability called Titan Gas. Yeah, now Titan Gas is basically, the room starts crumbling a little bit. It's a bit old. It's from Panda Land, so of course it's old. And um, the room fills with a bit of gas, which is unfortunate to say the least. So, And this just does ticking uh, damage on your raid for about 20 seconds. Um, but the ads do stop spawning during this time. However, everyone gets a buff. However, the, it does include the bosses this increases your melee damage by 25 percent and now this is on the bosses as well as so you the bosses will be doing 25 percent more damage um and uh there'll be ticking raid damage going on as well so at this point you want to be popping your cooldowns you yeah want to pop tanks want to pop the cooldowns and you want to be using all your healing cooldowns your personal cooldowns you know whatever you've got just to stay alive however that's about it so as long as you can survive the gas kill the ads kill the boss eventually i suppose it's actually kind of it's it's simple fight, but it's a little bit too boring unless you're dancing underneath the boss's feet. Yeah, that's so what I think. Personally. It's actually a good fight for melee, really. Yeah. It's a good fun fight for melee, which is lovely. So thanks for watching, guys. If this guide did help you out, then please do give us a thumbs up. It does help us out quite significantly. And make sure to comment, rate, and subscribe. And if you'd like to see more ten man raid guides by Fat Boss, please do click up on the annotations you see on your screen now. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs>